Okay, I received the following question. Um, I am confused on the process of auto-oxidation and how antioxidants relate to that process. I was wondering if you could provide a brief description of the process and how the two are connected. And we'll see if we can't uh, make that happen here. What's important to remember is that auto-oxidation is just another name for lipid oxidation or the process that causes oxidative rancidity. It's nothing different than what we actually have already learned. Now, reminding ourselves of our nomenclature conventions, here is a, a picture of a, at least part of a, triglyceride. Here's the long fatty acid chain. Here's the pentadiene unit where uh, oxidation is going to happen. And it's going to happen right here at this carbon-hydrogen bond, okay, between the two carbon-hydrogen double bonds. This is called an allylic CH bond. This is a weakened bond because of the resonance that can happen in this uh, structure once this is broken. Now remember, this line represents two electrons. And so when this breaks, it will break in a homolytic fashion. That is, one electron will go with the hydrogen, one electron will stay with the carbon. Okay. And again, we're going to call this part in blue R, so that that's how we get the RH designation when we actually go through the oxidation uh, reactions. And so we're going to call that part R, so we can refer to the whole molecule as RH. When the allylic CH bond breaks, this one right here, okay, the blue part in blue becomes the radical R dot. So the, the radical, the one electron will end up associated with this part of the molecule. Could be this, could be somewhere else. Um, but when that radical R dot reacts with oxygen, it becomes ROO dot. And those are the two that we're really interested in, R dot and ROO dot. That's where the antioxidants can have their effect. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves that oxidative rancidity is, is a three-step process. There's initiation, there's propagation, and then there's termination. And we'll talk about the first two because that's where antioxidants can really have an effect, not so much in termination, although they cause termination. So here's the initiation step. We've got our RH, remembering that this is the rest of the fat molecule. This is the allylic bond. And this is the reactive CH bond, okay, that's, uh, that's the one that we're interested in. And something will happen, light, heat, metal ions, something will cause this to break, okay, and we get the R dot radical, okay. And the overall reaction is shown here, and again, in, 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 uh, in initiation steps, there are free radicals only on the product side of the equation, all right. Now, in the propagation steps, there are really two of those that we talked about. R dot reacting with oxygen to produce this, and then this reacting with an original molecule of fat to produce the hydroperoxide and another R dot. So this, this two set of reactions, a set of two reactions, it comprises both the R dot, it involves both the R dot and the ROO dot. Okay, so both of those are important places where phenolic antioxidants can have an effect. And again, in propagation reactions, there are free radicals on both sides of the equation. That's why it keeps going. That's why it propagates. Okay. Now, if we look at our auto-oxidation scheme here, we, we look for R dot and ROO dot, and we find them fairly easily. Okay. Here's the R dot. All right. And it goes in here, and it goes to ROO dot, and this keeps going around, and it cranks out these hydroperoxides which can then fall apart and produce all this smelly stuff, or this can go over here and produce smelly stuff over here. So what we want to do is keep this from happening. Okay, so this R dot right here will become this R dot, and it can react with a phenolic antioxidant. Okay, now if we put a tertiary butyl group on here, this would be tertiary butyl hydroquinone. So the R dot reacts with this, and this is a high energy radical. It then produces a low energy radical plus something that has no radical nature at all. This is so low energy that it won't carry on the reaction. It won't go back through the initiation and propagation steps. Okay, so that's one way. That, that, so again, remembering that antioxidants, their job is to in, induce early termination. That's what this has done. We've gone from a high energy, very reactive radical 
to one that, that is not high energy, that's a low energy, that's not going to go around and tear stuff up and make more radicals. Okay. Now, if we go back to here, here's our, o, our OO dot. This one can also react with a phenolic antioxidant. And again, the ROO dot radical is high energy. The phenolic radical is very low energy. Okay, these things do not go through initiation. They do, uh, they do not go through propagation. However, they can do something else that's actually fairly useful. Here's two of those radicals. They will react with each other. And it will produce a quinone, which is what you see over here which is not useful in antioxidation at all. However, it does produce another molecule of the regenerated antioxidant. So in essence, we, we've used two of these. We've used half of two of these. They react and then produce another molecule that can then go back and, and do further antioxidation. So that's what's going on with autooxidation and how the phenolics affect it. Again, remembering we're going from high energy radicals R dot and ROO dot to low energy radicals like this one, which can then react to produce the quinone and the regenerated antioxidant.